it's one of those days where you're trying to figure out what to do with yourself. You know there's a bunch of projects you gotta get done and things you need to work on, but it's raining outside and you don't really feel like doing anything. So we're just gonna pick something random and uh, go with that, I think. By the way, if you saw the previous live stream where we were repotting houseplants, I've got these all set up over here. Oh, that person in the wheelchair is confused. And you can have this big crappy grin on your face and just like smile and continue on with your day. I got one of these grow light things and I got a little clamp thing so I could, uh, you know, put it over the plants. But then I realized I had this random lamp right here I was pretty much never gonna use. So I stuck the, I stuck the grow lamp bulb in there and I set these up here in front of the window. And I don't know, they're not, they're not wilty. They're starting to kind of perk up. I stuck them in the sink and soaked them real good. And still pretty good amounts of water in there. This one that we cut everything off of is doing great. And that's the old plant from... I'm going to see if I can figure out what video I got that from. I remember it was at an old apartment a long time ago. And I remember getting into the elevator and someone said something weird. I'm going to see if I can find that clip. I just pulled into the garage and I saw a giant house plant slash tree on the second floor of the garage. So I'm headed down there now to check it out. I'm in the elevator with this thing and the guy just called it a Charlie Brown tree. He said everything needs love. <laughs> but anyways, we have house plants here. I've never actually done the math as to, wait, I think someone did a video about this. How many house plants does it take to have enough oxygen to breathe? Anyways, random things I think about. We do, however, have some packages, at least one, that needs to be opened. So let's do that now. We have a package from the gift list. Once again, I cheated, and I'm pretty sure I know what this is. However, I'm very excited about it. Ah, it's got the, I was gonna say the classic yellow tape packaging from China, but this is a slightly different color. Normally it's like a, a darker, almost orangey color. This is one of those things, however, that I could have used a long time ago, but I'll never buy on my own. I don't know why exactly, but just kind of one of those things. It is a handheld digital oscilloscope. Now, granted, I do have a benchtop one, but having a portable one that you can carry around, these have a lot of automatic features. Zotech. If you're familiar with these guys, they're actually not too bad of a brand. Now, this is kind of a combination between a um, like a voltmeter and an oscilloscope. It's got a single channel up here on the top. And does it come with any probes? So we've got USB-C charging, temperature, generic meter probes. Ah, here we go. Yeah, so it's got it's got a times 10 switch on it. Ah, we've got the little little hook there on the end. Okay, so it does have a signal generator built into the side here. I'm gonna have to learn the interface on this thing, but thank you very much. Oh, let's look at the note. From Tom, thanks for your help and all the great videos. I got this because I thought, how much trouble can Dan get into with an oscilloscope? I, I would say a fair amount, probably. <laughs> yes, I really appreciate that. A multimeter two-in-one, 10 megahertz bandwidth, 48 meg samples per second and 9,999 counts for the multimeter. So yeah, it should should be perfect for basic wheelchair and multimeter type stuff. But anyways, yes, thank you. I'm going to familiarize, bleh, bleh. I'm going to familiarize myself with the interface and uh, we, we can do some cool stuff with this. By the way, with the rainy weather and whatnot, obviously power chairs, when you come inside, your wheels are all wet and you just get the floor completely soaked. Like I was saying previously, this floor is already trashed, so not too big of a deal with water. However, a little bit of a life hack. May not be the cheapest thing in the world, but that is a compressor-based dehumidifier right there. I actually got this at Goodwill of all places. Uh, price tag says $29.99. Normally, I usually wait till things like that are half price, but I probably paid 30 bucks for that. I think those are 100 something new. But the cool thing with that is, when you come in and get a bunch of water all over the ground from your tires, like I took the bounder over to the grocery store a little bit ago and it's sitting there dripping and doing its whole thing. You crank up that thing 
and in almost no time, in, in a room that's this size, which isn't really that big, this thing can magically dry the floor. It's kind of crazy, but anyways, random life hack for that. The tracks left on the floor here from where he came in are basically gone. I'm still sort of working on getting this room set up. There's where we do the live streaming at. And got some network stuff here, a little bit of it on the wall. This corner over here though, like I keep saying, is gonna be the like shipping and building and whatever web store stuff area. So I need to buy or build a corner desk or something to put there. And then over here, I just have this folding table here momentarily or for right now. And let's, let's be honest, it'll probably be there for a while. <laughs> but I was thinking this would be a good spot to have kind of my workbench because obviously it's being used as that now. Then we've got storage in here and eh, anyways. So I think what we're gonna do is grab this here, digital oscilloscope that we just got. And one thing I've always wanted to do that I've never gotten around to is actually visualize the pulse width modulation or PWM signal that power chairs use to drive the motors. So I figure now that we have this thing completely isolated, battery powered, it's got all the automatic features in the world so you don't have to worry about, you know, getting your trigger levels and everything set up just right. We're gonna hook it up to the bounder simply because it's rear wheel drive. I have a jack right here. And the nice thing with this chair is the controller is right on the back of it. Let me get this thing turned around. There we go. The main power module or main controller is right here on the back. This thing's dusty because I've been driving it around like a crazy person. But yeah, we can get to our connections right here and we can set our little scope right here. We can jack the back of the thing up. I can hit the joystick and we can take a look at the waveform that the controller makes to make the motors drive. So I thought that might be kind of interesting. This thing does have internal storage. I think it just takes screenshots and you can pull them off with the USB-C port on here. So let's go into mode. Supposedly you press hold save. Oh yeah, there we go. Something pick.bmp. Interesting. I'm gonna plug this into the computer real quick and see what that looks like. Oh yes, and sure enough, we have a folder here with a couple of bitmap images. And yeah, there we go. It just basically takes a screenshot. Cool. All right, sweet. Let's uh, let's get this thing hooked up over there and see what kind of waveform patterns we can capture. Took a little bit of screwing around, but I slid the battery box out. I pulled the bolts off the main controller and I've got our ground hooked up to battery negative and our probe is connect to, connected to that motor's, well, one of the wires going to it. And I think we have a representation here of what's going on. It's a little tricky with this and I'm not 100% familiar with this meter. The way the normal and auto triggering on it works is a little bit funky. So the waveform we're gonna get here, we're gonna see a few different spikes and you'll see them getting closer together and further apart. Those are essentially going to be the length of the pulses that are driving that motor. So let's go ahead and run forward here. So you can see there we've got a bunch of random pulses. As I speed up, you'll see them move around. So as we speed up and slow down, you can kind of see how those are. Let me see if we can do a uh, single capture here. Now I know a few people are gonna be screaming at their screens as I'm doing this. You gotta remember, my scope usage is pretty much limited to the automotive industry, which is a lot different than electronics. And also, this scope is weird and different <laughs> than what I'm used to. So anyways, I'm just fumbling around here. If you have any thoughts though, or, if you've, or you've used this exact scope before, let me know, I'm curious. I use the term scope loosely. It's a, a $50 instrument that gives you basic waveforms good for just identifying the presence of signals, not necessarily accurately measuring them. That's the difference. I just wanna see waveforms and kind of what they look like as opposed to measuring them. Those are the two different schools of thought when it comes to using oscilloscopes. And ugh, I need to get off the floor. Ooh, okay. Let's open up our time base here a little bit. Oh, it does capture off the screen. Oh, no way. Uh, trying to figure this out is definitely interesting. We'll go up to 
two milliseconds. Run this again. Now, can we zoom in? Okay, so if we take a screenshot, it's gonna erase it. So let's see if we can get down in here. Yeah, there we go. That's what I was looking for right there. Well, anyways, um, more playing around is required, but this thing definitely has some limitations, but it's pretty cool. I've been, <laughs> I'm thinking now, what all, what all the things around here have a waveform that I can view with this thing? But anyways, I'm gonna put this chair back together. That's, uh, that's enough screwing around for now. So we've got some, we got some data on this thing. Power down. We're going to attempt to use the whiteboard. So when I talk about PWM, when it comes to power chair motors, what am I ex like? What am I talking about? It's pulse width modulation, and this is going to be a gross oversimplification as it applies specifically to power chairs. So we're going to say we have this motor here, and uh, we've got a shaft that comes out the end, and then you know we've got our our wheel here or whatever. When you put electricity into this, it has some permanent magnets inside of it. And then there is a giant rotating assembly inside here. And it's kind of like this maybe. And then this whole thing spins around and the shaft comes out the end and drives your tires. So we've got the motor housing. We've got some permanent magnets that are usually glued or epoxy to the housing and we have a big rotating shaft here in the middle. Now, this giant rotating shaft in the middle, I'm just gonna make it this rectangle here. Traditionally, DC electric motors, when you give them voltage, there is basically an electric field that appears around them, and that interfaces with those permanent magnets that are built into the housing. And this field allows the whole thing to spin. If you have a motor with like a dimmer switch or like a conveyor belt or something like that, you just give it more and more voltage, and as the voltage level goes up, our field goes up, and the thing spins faster and faster. Now, that works fine, but it kind of wastes a lot of energy because you're constantly putting voltage into this thing. After those fields are generated, it takes a few seconds before they collapse. So you put the energy in or the voltage in, the field appears, and then when the voltage is taken away, there's a small amount of time that elapses. I don't know what the specific value is. We'll say some sort of milliseconds or microseconds, but the amount of time elapses before this field goes away and the motor can still take advantage of this energy. Let's say, for example, we've got our power coming in and our voltage just ramps up like this until we get to the speed we want and this will be our voltage that's driving the motor. You can see it's just a nice solid line going up. This entire time, there is voltage being put into this motor, which is taking energy from the batteries. Now what we can do instead of this, to save a little bit of power, knowing that that magnetic field takes a little while to collapse, we don't have to constantly keep putting power into it. Now, there's other advantages to this as well, like you can specifically determine how much torque and power you want the motor to output under different conditions, but we're not necessarily gonna worry about that. So the way PWM works, we wanna drive the thing at the same speed, but we wanna save a little power. So we basically, we do spikes like this. And we're basically not taking power out of the batteries between these spikes. And to get a little bit further into it, the duration of these spikes and the space between them allows us to control how much power and output we're getting. But essentially, we're just doing a whole bunch of spikes like this. Again, really oversimplified. It's basically off at all of these times, so we're saving a bit of power. But what I was wanting to look at on the scope was this exact pattern. Depending on the drive system and how it works, our spike can go up it can hover a little bit and then go back down. And then there's gonna be a gap between the next spike before it comes up and happens again. And the pulse width, that is what we're talking about in pulse width modulation. We have these pulses and they can all have different widths. Like see, this one's really narrow. 
that one's really narrow, this one's like really wide. And the amount of time of the pulses, so we've got the actual power on time here, and then we've got also the amount of time that it's not on. By leveraging the amount of time between on and off, we can do a lot of really cool control things. So that's basically it. Instead of just blasting power in, we're just doing a whole bunch of pulses. And this can be anywhere from like, I don't know, we'll say 10,000 to 30,000 hertz, which is 10 or 30,000 pulses per second. Now again, different power chair control systems, I'm not sure what the actual frequency rate is. You know, the amount of time that these go up and down is, you know, how often are the frequency. But it's something to that effect. So we've got tens of thousands of times per second these pulses are happening. And that's PWM, sort of, relating to power chairs. Well, that mail time got a little bit out of control, I think. But I really like being able to acquire data and see waveforms. And when I was in the automotive industry years ago, using an oscilloscope, well, those little handheld ones didn't exist back then. But lugging around a big one you had to plug into the wall, it was super handy to identify a lot of various problems here and there. And you could, you could tell a lot about a vehicle right from the fuse box right down to if a vein on the fuel pump inside the tank was missing just by looking at the waveforms and all that. So anyways, it's fly zapper. <laughs> it's one of those things that I'm gonna be using constantly. One more thing I wanna work on, we're not gonna have the results today, but we've got the battery testing cart back out here. I'm running these batteries down again here, but I realized I have not yet tested one of these old school analog chargers this year is old Lester, the transformer based. See, Lester, Lester Electrical. But I wanted to test one of these and see what they actually do. I, they do have a little bit of electronics, but no microcontroller in there. So I really want to get a charging profile curve printed out for one of these guys. So I think that should be pretty interesting. Oh, this thing's, this thing's weigh about 15,000 tons. Anyways, it'll be a couple hours before we get the voltage down low enough on these to run a cycle on that. But I will mention the results of this on Thursday on the live stream. And then also, I think I published the Volt Pro charging graphs on the website. Anyways, I'm going to add this stuff there, assuming that I did. But I'm just envisioning that this thing is going to work like a power supply and just basically slowly take the voltage up as it's charging the batteries and then level off. Although again, I don't know. It's completely solid state. But anyways, I think we're gonna call that good for now. So anyways, thanks for watching this weird little adventure that spiraled out of control. And I'll see you Thursday on the live stream. And yes, this flag has seen some action.